So today, or should I should say this video, is all about making a jig for uh, the egg boxes. The egg boxes, you see, chickens lay eggs, eggs got to be delivered to the customer, and you have to have an egg box or an egg tray. Now we're going to sell our eggs in boxes of six, and they come double, so it's a box of 12, but you could actually split that in half, so it's six per side as well. So this video is me with a cold, I just got over the cold, uh, making a jig to print the top of egg boxes. Um, it's a little bit interesting because I'm half Scottish blood as it were and uh, don't don't believe in spending money ever and <clears throat> and I, I've basically made this stuff out of out of bits and pieces that I have lying around the apartment. We haven't gone out and bought anything special for this so I've made a jig um, and the video will show me going through that process and then printing the top of the egg box. This is a first trial run. Uh, we will make changes to the logo on top and we'll probably change the print method. We should, we should maybe use the pad printer. We have a pad printer. I, um, it's not big enough for an egg box. So we'd have to print it twice to, to cover the, to the cover the top of the egg box so we're utilizing what we have i hope you enjoy here it comes so let's have a look at what we're dealing with <clears throat> egg boxes now they come in sets of two we have to print across the top. So I have to make a jig so I can put these on the bed of the printer and print it without having to reset the machine. One of the problems is alignment on the printer, on the bed of the printer. So they can't be like this, they can't be like that, they can't be up, they can't be down, they're gonna be flat. So the, the print head can run across the surface. And it has to be a repeatable process. And this part, which is gonna be printed on, has to be as flat as possible. Now you have to remember the 18 centimeters because if I if I was to open open the carton and have a insert in here and I wanted to line it up like so and we have to make sure that we're under 18 we're on about 15 on there I wonder if I could capture this on a GoPro have a look here. We have a sponge and the sponge is not far off the inner area which needs to be flat. This needs to be flat this area here. And I wonder if I can if I wonder if I can, such a small screen on a GoPro. Let's see if we can see. Think about actually cutting this off here, and gluing it to a piece of wood, two supports, and then put an elastic band over it, and doing the graphics in such a way that we can put elastic bands over it and just pull it down. I'm thinking about using these tabs on the egg boxes to put an elastic band over, if at all possible. I could actually make a mold off the inside of here with plaster of Paris and put some wood in there and make a make a hard form but I think this this uh, this action on the top of the box with this sponge and being a sponge it will compress a little and be forgiving 
So I think that's the way forward. So I borrowed my uh, daughter's <laughs> coloring pens just to show you what we intend doing. I'm just gonna move the paper around. <clears throat> I'm suffering from a cold, so excuse me there. <clears throat> so this is gonna be a piece of wood. What I intend doing is on that piece of wood, place two sponges. And these will be glued or mounted in some sort of fashion. Look, sponges. The egg carton will sit on top like so and <clears throat> with rubber bands on the ends we will hold the egg boxes down and that will actually give a nice level parallel surface this this will this bed will actually be mounted. We have a printer bed that that this would rest on. Obviously not drawn to scale, and we will screw up into the mounting block to keep it all secure, so that we can have repeatability. Sixteen. So we need to cut it in half. Let's go right on to the eight. Just, uh, I mean, it's a sponge. You're gonna have problems cutting this square. I'm talking about square. If I cut it at a slant, and this comes out at maybe that angle, I'll use a stronger spring on this side just to pull that, pull that down more this side, and that's how we're gonna compensate for any. Um, discrepancies in the cut. I need a cutting board otherwise the missus is going to go absolutely bananas with me. There we go. One cutting board and we have wet the sides of this. <coughs> and here we go. So by the time I put this up on a, a two centimeter thick plank of wood under here, mount it all, I think we're gonna be okay. It's hard to see it. It's hard to see it uh, on camera, I guess. But that, that looks all right. It'll level itself up nicely. A little bit of tension with the. Um, Elastic bands, what have you? That'd be, that'd be fine. So, like I said earlier, one of the one of the dimensions I have to take into account is the the width of the print bed, and in this case, it's three hundred mill milliliters millimeters. So, I'm just going to mark off <coughs> three hundred on here. middle of November but hey it's so hot in the houses over here and I uh, tend to wear shorts. This bed here slides in and out and in here the print heads go backwards and forwards. So 
this <clears throat> bed is secured by two locators. Are you going to lift it up? See, there's two holes in the bed there. So it locks it in place. So this means that this here, I can actually drill through this bed, secure pieces of work to it, going down here. Should maybe get the. So, when we're talking about the stops here to line to the edge of this wood so that it sits nicely here, I thought to myself, well, let's go and rip down some wood and make some sides to this so that it would eventually touch here. And then we make a side for that side. Now, that would entail <coughs> ripping down this piece of old MDF, which we can do, we can do that, or I found some brackets and these would be much better because this, this would be, this would keep everything visible in the printing, but there's the problem, these cannot be higher than So I have to think whether or not I need to cut this down because it needs to be uh, just under here where the thumb is. So this is my vice. <coughs> I have a couple of these uh, sash clamps.
actually door stops. Door stops for you to stop the door heading back. Whoa! Yay, super wide angle GoPro. So let's have a look. We have it actually jig set up. It's not 100% there yet, but I've got to level it off. I've got to put my Bernier calipers and measure. But I had two holes in the bed. And I put two bolts up and I basically cable tied it around. <laughs> I actually have a, a flip flop as a vibration damper. Basically, that's that's it. If this works, we're, we're, we're laughing. It's not a very complicated jig. I'm not sure how much you can see with the GoPro. But yeah, we're almost there. Got to set up the camera, got to set up the computer, print software, blah, blah, blah. Done. <laughs>